Hey guys, welcome to Cycle One, week seven. If you are new here to my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and give me a thumbs up too if this video is at all helpful to you. I'm gonna jump right in and go over how I presented the memory work or the new grammar, whatever you wanna call it, in the classroom on our community day. I'll also talk to you about how um, science went for us and, and give you some tips on that as well. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, geography, that's what I started with is geography. Now I teach the Abecedarians, so age four and five, and we just did show me, tell me, and we were able to um, hit all of the locations very quickly, but also hitting them seven times at least, and we did a really good job. So, and after we did geography, we got up and we got working on the timeline. So I have had a request in the past. I haven't shared the hand motions. I do just pull them from um, the Classical Conversations website. But some of my parents, um, it's easier than for them to watch my videos and get the motions so they can practice at home. So I'm going to go ahead and show those to you. So the very first one is Jesus the Messiah. And the signal for Jesus Messiah in sign language is to take um, your finger and touch the palm of your hand and just go back and forth like this. So Jesus the Messiah. And for all of the royalty in our timeline, we... We use the same motions, kind of take the letter. So we're going to do the M for Messiah, like this. And then just take it from your left shoulder down to your right hip. So Jesus, the Messiah. And then because the song does have enough time, you can kind of raise your arms and say, Messiah, like that. Um, and maybe for their age, you may just want to do that anyway, um, if you've got the little guys. So for Pentecost... Um, it did say something about pointing your tongue. Now, I don't know if you were supposed to touch your tongue, but what I've chosen to do, this is the only kind of deviation, is that I'm going to touch my chin right here. And I told them that we were signaling that we were touching to our tongue. So Pentecost is um, like this. So you touch your chin and you kind of do flames going up for Holy Spirit, that type of thing. Okay, so Pentecost and the early church, you're just going to put your little hand as your foundation and put the, the C on top signify the early church. So persecution spreads the gospel. Persecution, um, you're going to use the kind of like emotion meaning to fight. So you can kind of just do whatever with your hands like this. So persecution spreads the gospel. So for spreads the gospel, you're going to do the sign language letter G. And I believe that the appropriate way you're supposed to do is have your hand nice and flat, but this is what your hand actually looks like. So have your hand like that. And your other hand, you're pretending that you're flipping pages in a book. So you're going to say, spread the gospel. So persecution spreads the gospel. Next one is Herod's temple destroyed by Titus. So you're going to um, signal or sign for temple. So you're just doing the sign language letter T on your little foundation. So Herod's temple destroyed. So you can just kind of crumple it up and throw it away by Titus. And that's the same and motion we just did. So for the letter T. So Herod's temple destroyed by Titus. Diocletian divides the Roman Empire. You're going to do the um, letter D, sign language letter D for Diocletian divides. So you just take your hands and put them on top of each other and divides the Roman Empire, letter R. That's that. And then Constantine legalizes Christianity. You're going to do the letter C. And you're just going to do the symbol for Jesus, so to, for Christianity there. Constantine legalizes Christianity. And then India's Gupta dynasty. So India, in all the timeline, this is where you're tapping for India's Gupta dynasty. And you're going to tap your ear. And then you're going to kind of shake it down with the Y to signal um, or signify gold or yellow. So India's Gupta dynasty. So that's the timeline. For math, um, you just have one set of numbers to go over this week, the 13s, and we set it, and then um, we sang through it with the CC song, and I did add, um, we did alligator chomps last week, so I incorporated that week in this week's, but they didn't seem as excited as the first week, so um, what I did was, um, you know, I said, let's do large alligator mouths, and then we did tiny, and then we did large singing through it. They just didn't seem excited. I'm just going to be honest, but um, we did sing through it and everything, and 
um, followed it on the board. Um, I usually use like some type of pointer and if you don't have a pointer, you can use a ruler. Um, okay, so moving on to history. So for history, um, what I would like to do, and I think this is um, just a good idea for presenting um, anything that is um, hit in the timeline, but also um, elaborated in history, like a whole sentence. Um, so Hinduism, I use the same um, hand motion for Hinduism that I did that we used in the timeline. So the one that our community is using or, or that I was using is um, Hinduism, kind of like two spirits. You can see my hands going like this. So for you, you might want to think of what you did for timeline and do that. But Hinduism developed around 1500 BC. So what I did for 1500 as I put a one over here and a five over here for 1500 BC, and it's known for karma. So for karma, take your finger like this and kind of draw a circle around with the other one to kind of signify what goes around comes around for karma. And then reincarnation is going to look like this and the caste system. So, and it kind of flowed well with the music. So it was karma, reincarnation, and then you just take your hand and start going up to, for the caste system. And then it's not in the written sentence, but on the song um, before you just go into founded in the sixth century BC, the word Buddhism is said. So again, I'm using the symbol for Buddhism that we used in the timeline, which um, we just used um, like our large hands kind of under our big Buddha belly. So it says Buddhism and then founded in the sixth century um, for sixth century. I didn't um, you I just put six fingers up like this and put them together because we just did 1500 this way or, or this way. So I just put them together like this, which I think I did this way. Not this way. Anyway, same idea. Six fingers up for the sixth century BC Buddhism hands under your big belly again and then teaches self denial. That's what I did for self-denial. As the path, so create a little path to enlightenment, and then you just repeat it. And then at the very end of the song, after, after it's repeated twice, it says Hinduism, Buddhism. So it worked out really good in the classroom, lots of fun, and making those connections with the timeline. For science, um, no song, just hand motions. And it's really cool. There's just four. So for live birth, we pretended to rock a live baby. And then um, for eggs, um, we pretended that we had eggs in our hands and that we were being gentle with them. And then for fragmentation, I just put our hands together and pulled them apart. Fragmentation. And then budding. Just kind of little things that are growing up and budding. Um, that's what we did for science. For English, we did hand motions. For inside, take your little, and these are from, if you want some ideas, um, from YouTube, prepositions in paradise. So, um, and they did inside, take a little hand and make a little circle and put your fingers in it and say in, and then inside you just dip down, inside, and then in two, um, like is like this, and then near. That's what we did. And we just take turns, I show that to them, a couple times and then the way that it helps us get through the seven is have each individual student um, take a turn to present and that's what we did for science too just helps them um, make it a little more interactive and they seem to enjoy it and for latin we use these sheets that i've used um every week besides the one that's just the noun cases but um for the declensions i use these and it really, even as the tutor, if you're, if this doesn't come naturally to you, the pronunciation, this really helps. So, and um, you can do this a couple of different ways. Um, this particular week, the kids just kind of crowded around me. They're all shoulder to shoulder and they're all pretty small so they can see very well. And then I just take a pointer and we just go through these and we just sing the song as we tap through it. And the super cool thing was and hopefully you'll have this happening in your classroom too, is that we didn't even have to play the song. As soon as you get going, they are singing, they know the tune and it's just super rewarding. So that's what we've done. And I will link this, because this is um, a free printable and I just keep them in a page protector and keep them in my 
my supplies. And the only thing that I added was writing which declension at the top to help keep me organized, make sure I'm pulling the right one. So, oh, for music, yes, music, the tin whistle, how awesome, right? So um, I have heard some tips that teaching this tin whistle is mostly just about classroom management. And I would have to agree. Um, if you're gonna try to get them learning anything, you've gotta get them to listen. Um, so we sat down in chairs and we talked about making sure that we're leaving it on our lap um, and then having it ready and this is play position and, and, and things like that. And they did pretty, they did pretty good. Okay, so for music, what I did for myself is um, I am a new tutor and I think it helps me keep organized um, to actually write down how I'm going to present. Um, and so what I did was I have a nice long post-it note with lines on it and I just write exactly kind of what I'm gonna say. And I practice and run through that so because you have 30 minutes to fill. So what I did first is I showed them the tin whistle and then I found a Tin Whistle song since we are going over the parts of the Tin Whistle and I will sing it for you. It's to the tune of, Do You Know the Muffin Man? So it's, oh, do you know the Tin Whistle, the Tin Whistle, the Tin Whistle? Do you know the Tin Whistle? These are its parts. Barrel, fibble, mouthpiece, finger holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, left hand on top. So that was really fun. And I kept reiterating when I was teaching left hand on top, left hand on top. So that's what we did first. I did play them a demo of Twinkle Twinkle. I will spare you the agony of listening to me play. Um, then um, gave them instructions um, on how to play and reminded them again about the left hand on top. But then I let them just freestyle and play. And that's how I taught Cacophony and asking them, does that sound like we're playing the same thing? And just kind of play that up and um, to teach that. And then we did work really hard to try to play together. And it is really hard, so um, hard to do. But um, the book says, you know, kind of find a way to count them in. One, two, ready, play, so that you at least attempt to try to play the same thing. And that's what we did. We just tried to play the song and just reminded them um, our community um, had the sheets all printed up in page protectors, your page 89 with Twinkle Twinkle, which gives them the little visual at the top. Um, and it was super helpful. And then we, at the end of class, um, we went over and reviewed what are the parts. And that's what we did for music. And for science, science this week is taking um, an animal nature walk and um, what we did before we went out, I gave every child a small Ziploc bag. Now, I'll be honest, only a couple people brought anything back. Um, we didn't have any um, thing that we really could bring back. We had a couple kids bring back little pieces of bark or twigs and stuff like that, but we didn't actually come across any. Um, it would have been awesome if we came across some beetles that were dead or, or something like that, bugs that were already dead. Um, we kind of discouraged picking up live ants. We don't have to want to deal with because we did come across some red fire ants. So we don't want to do that. Um, and then I think if there was anything that we could have picked up because our whole community kind of was going over the same area, um, maybe the first group got all of it, you know. But um, we had a really good time just talking and picking up stuff. And what I was um, able to do was really get them to slow down and... Um, think a little bit outside of the box that we might have to move some things. So flip over rocks. Um, we did find a nice um, leaf pile that had gotten nice and wet and, and all of that. And I just used, I should have brought some supplies, but I only brought pencils. And I used that as a way to move the leaves all around. And, and then um, I could, any of the live bugs that we found, I could just like let the bugs crawl up on my pencil and show everybody. But maybe I could have brought, in, um, that's a funny word, brought with me a piece of paper so the bugs could have uh, crawled up on the paper a lot easier than me trying to control it with 
um, a pencil or I did find a little piece of plastic, but I didn't want to get bit by anything. Um, and I didn't want to smash anything either. Bugs are so delicate when they're small. So just some ideas for you. Get out there with them and flip things over. And that's what we did. Now, um, we had some sheets as well, like kind of like a scavenger hunt or bingo. Um, these were provided to me by my director. If you want to know what the source is, drop me a comment and I will make sure that you know and I will contact her. So, and again, these are from um, our director and we are going to have a, a little booklet or um, nature folder going for the kids. So um, we have the sheets from when we did the bean experiment and we are going to keep these and put them in a folder for them. So we've got week seven, they can draw some pictures of what they saw. And that's what we did when we got back to the classroom. And I just reminded them, what did you see? What did you see? Because we did see birds while we were outside and we did see plenty of bugs. And then in this um, category down here, it says other items. I have them draw pictures of sticks or, or that kind of thing, sticks and pieces of wood. So, and um, because these are labeled week seven, these are probably on CC connected. And then there's a pairing one that says week eight for when we do the plant walk. So um, take a look on CC Connected that maybe that's where these are from or drop me a line and I'll be glad to find out the source. But um, that is it. I hope you guys are doing great and I appreciate you guys um, tuning into my channel. Subscribe. I'll record every week um, for the memory work and, if, and give me a like too. That way it sends the video up for others that are looking for ideas as well. Thank you so much. See you later.